Mr. President, pleasure to have you on. That's a pleasure for me too. Thank you for the invitation. You met with Hillary Clinton. What was your impression uh, of her? I know her maybe for 16 years. Uh, and we have a quite an intensive dialogue when I was a Minister of Foreign Affairs. We launched together the uh, Strategic uh, Cooperation Commission between Ukraine and the United States. And I can confirm that she's very well informed and deeply uh, ready for the all development of the situation in Ukraine. And I was uh, pleasantly surprised on that. You met Vice President Biden? Yes. There's one more person you wanted to meet while you were in New York, which was Donald Trump. Um, why do you think he refused to meet with you? First of all, this is not true, and we don't have any refusal. Uh, that was the uh, protocol matter. And as far as I understand, our schedule is, was so stressed that we should find out the uh, window for that. But, but just we, were, we were told that you, your office approached the, uh, the Trump campaign and you never heard back from them. Oh, we demonstrated that we were ready to uh, meet and we don't have, uh, we, they have a dialogue, but they don't find out the place in the schedule which would be acceptable for both of us because I can inform that the, during the last two, day, two and a half days, I meet with a 22 second, 22 head of states and the prime minister. Do you think he's avoiding you? I don't think so. But let me ask you, uh, Trump said something very, has said a few things that are, uh, have taken some people, many experts, by mm -hmm. surprise. He said at one point, Ukraine, Russia is not in Ukraine, and then he said, uh, it's there, but in a certain way. Now, in a sense, this is what the Russians often say, that they are actually not in eastern Ukraine, that those are not Russian soldiers in eastern Ukraine. Those are... They may be Russian citizens, but they are volunteering, that this is not a <laughs> planned act. Explain to us whether you have proof that the people who are in eastern Ukraine are Russian soldiers directed by the Russian military. military. I hate the idea to have just a common phrase. I want to give you some absolutely practical examples. For example, uh, in the August 2014, we take 22 Russian paratroopers take it in prison, demonstrate it to the whole world, receiving a lot of their parents who asking me as a president to use my pardon right and give him back. And at that situation, Russia do not command how they uh, appeared in Ukraine. And they said at the end of the day when we have their tanks, their uh, military ID, their forms, they said, okay, they lost their ways and was they got, seven, lost in got, got lost in Ukraine and get 72 kilometers inside my territory, killing Ukrainian civilians, killing Ukrainian soldiers, uh, just uh, providing an offensive operation. And this is the only word how they can use it, aggression. And we have a lots of video, a lots of their uh, testimony in the court when they recognize that. Uh, in the year 2015, we have uh, many cases. And just to finish, give you the figures. Currently, only on occupied territory on the east of my country, we have more than 700 Russian tanks, more than 1,250 artillery systems, more than 1,000 armed uh, personnel carrier, more than 300 multi-rocket launch system. And this is the huge army. More than 50% of the, uh, all the number of armies in the European Union. And this is huge army supplied by Russia and keep occupied territory attacking Ukraine. Another thing Mr. Trump has said, which uh, I assume worries you, is he has talked about how he would look into whether or not to accept the Russian annexation of Crimea. Does that worry you? Look, uh, first of all, I think that the uh, election, this is the matter for the uh, uh, American people. And this is the not only privilege to be American to, to vote for the next president, but also, if you allow me, the very big responsibility. Because you elect the president of the country who would be the global leader. 
And this global leader is vitally important, not only for the United States, but to keep freedom, to keep democracy, to keep values in the very difficult world we have now, in a very difficult situation in the world. And I, if you allow me, I can command that, that this is the part of the uh, election rhetoric. I think that after the election, the no matter who would be elected, it would be a very responsible leader of the great American nation. Who has recognized uh, the annexation of Crimea by Russia? What countries? Oh, it's uh, very few. Uh, North Korea, <laughs> this is the Cuba, and Venezuela, just three. And I think this is a very self-explained. Um, ah, no, sorry. I double check. Cuba is not yet recognized. That was just a statement, but not official okay. paper. So Cuba not is moving yeah. a little bit so <laughs> back from Putin's style of democracy. A lot of people think, not just Mr. Trump, that Putin is a strong leader. You have dealt with Putin. You've actually dealt with him in several circumstances. You were a big businessman. You st still have a big factory in Russia. Um, you've dealt with him as the leader of Ukraine. Is Putin a strong leader? Look. Putin, when I have an opportunity to speak with him, 10 years ago, um, Putin year 2014, 2016, completely different person. Huh. Uh, if you reach uh, any agreement with Putin now, that means nothing. Why? Because he doesn't keep his word. And this is not a characteristic of the strong leader, if you allow me to be absolutely straightforward. Uh, because... Uh, Strong leader means responsibility. Strong leader means the bright perspective for the country. Strong leader means to keep the words. And with that situation, strong leader is the ability to provide reform and make life of your people better. Has Putin and with that understanding of the strong leader, I wish Putin to become a strong leader. Has he lied to you personally? Uh, sometimes he do not keep his word, that's true. Uh, there was one other peculiar thing that happened in the United States with re regard to policy toward uh, Ukraine, which is uh, during the Republican National Convention, mm -hmm. uh, there were planks in the pla platform, you're well aware of this, that called for uh, lethal aid being provided towards Ukraine, and then they were taken out. Um, a lot of people wondered whether Paul Manafort, who was then chairman of Mr. Trump's campaign, had something to do with this. Mm -hmm. Ukrainian investigators argue that the former pro-Russian president of Ukraine, who was ousted, Mr. Yanukovych, was providing uh, cash payments to Mr. Manafort. Can you confirm that? Look, uh, in the <coughs> Ukrainian National Anti-Corruption Bureau was um, evidence of the possible uh, participation of the uh, Paul Manafort in this type of operation. I hate the idea to have any comments because we be a democratic, civilized country and this is a responsibility of the investigation. But I can confirm that the investigation now is going on and without any political interference, neither from president nor from the government. But I want to confirm that, that we are open to cooperation with any Americans partners uh, law enforcement agency to who uh, want to see the who evidence want, who want to see the evidence and to want to have a cooperation you spoke you've spoken often about uh, uh, Russia's hybrid war and about Russia's uh, m uh, ways of affecting the internal politics of Ukraine other European countries financing of elections cyber warfare do you think it's possible that Russia is trying to do something similar in the United States I think Russia tried to do that in all the global center of influence. Uh, they are quite active in the United States. If you see what's going on in certain European capitals, uh, I separately said about Ukraine, so this is financing all the Euro, uh, Russia financing all the Eurosceptic movements. Russia want to destabilize the Europe. Russia, uh, the main danger for Russia is European unity. And all the European skeptics receive a strong support, not necessarily financial, from the Russian Federation. 
And if you know now the number of people who is uh, uh, listening and viewing the state-sponsored Russia Today television in the United States, that would be quite a big number of people. <laughs> and this is in every cable uh, network. I think that this is not dangerous for the United States because the United States has a, a very strong injection against this uh, hybrid war. But uh, in Europe or in, or in Ukraine, uh, the uh, Russian-sponsored mass media, uh, social network, political parties, the main purpose is just to destabilize the situation, to ruin the unity, and to move the situation back uh, on the bilateral relation with, with NATO, uh, with uh, Russia. And with that situation, when I was asked what we need the most, from uh, leaders of European Union member states, from the United States, uh, my answer is very simple. Not money. Money, yes, but not on the first priority. Not assistance of the reform. Yes, but not on the first priority. Even not the lethal weapons. We can defend our country by ourselves. First of all, we need unity. European unity and transatlantic unity and solidarity with Ukraine. Mr. President, pleasure to have you on.